Hello, hello, how's everyone doing? Awesome, I like it, love it. Uh, we've got a amazing panel up next, uh, all about redefining fashion. As you can see, I'm attempting to redefine fashion with this tiny chair, because I'm a track chair. This is a little gift from a friend uh, that I used to work with back when I um, was a user researcher on Adobe Aero. So you get bad puns and a fashion tie-in. But enough about me and my tiny chair. Uh, so if you're sitting on the sidelines trying to understand what the next decade of fashion and beauty will bring, you are not alone. Luckily, our next panel will address exactly this topic. It's all about redefining fashion and beauty's next decade, from virtual beings and games to generative AI. Moderating our panel will be Akbar Hamid, founder and CEO of Fifth Column, which is a leading communication and marketing agency at the convergence of emerging tech and consumer brands. Fun fact, Akbar recently won the Web3 Marketing Trailblazer Award from Adage. Without further ado, please welcome Akbar and the panel. Thank you. So we're super excited to be here today. This is uh, Kathy Hackle, futurist, visionary, and chief metaverse <laughs> officer at Journey. We have Maya Kosovalik, vice president, digital innovation and e-commerce at Nick's Professional Makeup at L'Oreal and Augustina Sartori, Senior Innovation Director at Alta and Managing Director at Prism Ventures. So um, thank you all for listening in. I think this is going to be really important because we heard in the previous talk a little bit about how um, you know, marketing uh, brands and, and marketers are really thinking about money first when they're embracing these technologies. And, and I think we're here to talk about how actually that's not exactly what we're doing, where a lot of these thought leaders here are really embracing emerging technologies in really authentic and unique ways that connect with today's consumer. And it's imperative for brands to drive forward this emerging technology because that's gonna encourage mass adoption. Brands like L'Oreal, Ulta, Walmart brands that Kathy works with, that we work with at Fifth Column, these are the ones that drive and shape consumer culture, so they're gonna drive and shape mass consumer adoption. Um, so we're super excited to jump into that, but I wanna give each of these incredible thought leaders a moment to introduce themselves because their foundations and thought leadership are really pivotal in the space and will root the discussion for us. So Kathy. Right. Um, so hi everyone, I'm excited to be here at AWE. I missed it last year, so just thrilled to be back. Um, I've been in the extra space for quite a while, working with companies like HTC Vive, Magic Leap, uh, then AWS, uh, then created my own company, which got acquired in 10 months. So as an entrepreneur, as a female entrepreneur, very proud of that. Yeah, um, yeah good clap. And yeah, now I, I work at Journey as Chief Metaverse Officer and also Chief Futurist. Um, there I kind of lead the virtual studio. I know some of my team members are here. And yeah, we've been working with lots of really amazing brands. Everyone from the city of Orlando uh, to Nike, Ralph Lauren, and yes, Walmart, like you mentioned, a lot of different companies helping them navigate the, this new space. And I agree with you. It, it, you know, in, order for, in order for what the XR industry wants to eventually accomplish, they, there needs to be brands that are going to be able to help them. Uh, you know, get to get to where, where they need to be. Uh, I'm also the founder of Verse Lux, my own luxury tech label. But, but it's part label, part lab, and I have my own jewelry collection. And yeah, I'm a multi-hyphenate, multi-layered person. And um, I do want to say, especially after that talk, that I come to you today with a message of positivity, especially for the women and the BIPOC folks in the audience. Of you, you I really want you to believe that you can accomplish what you set out your heart to do. Um, because I've been very blessed by this industry, being part of XR and then being part of the fashion industry. So I do want to give a clap to all the women yeah. and BIPOC folks out there. You can accomplish a lot of things. And, yeah. and, and you forgot your book, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we actually have a, a freebie. The book will be available outside after the talk for free, first come, first serve. So, yeah, come with free books as well. <laughs> and Maya? Um, uh, hi, so I'm Maya Kosovalik. Um, I'm, uh, as Akbar said, the VP of Ecom and Digital Innovation for NYX Professional Makeup um, with L'Oreal. I've been with L'Oreal for over 18 years now, and I've had the privilege to work on some of our biggest global brands like Lancome, uh, Yves Saint Laurent, Giorgio Armani, Kiehl's, and of course, uh, L'Oreal Paris and NYX Professional Makeup. Um, I've also had the privilege to work across sales, marketing, and digital. 
uh, and across some of the biggest <laughs> consumer um, markets and with some of the biggest beauty consumers in the world, including uh, China, Brazil, Argentina, Canada, and in the US. I'm currently based in LA. Um, where I first built out uh, the e-com sort of team uh, process and capabilities for uh, our brand to win in direct and indirect e-commerce and retailer media. And then most recently, uh, my team and I are obsessed with leveraging innovation to deepen consumer engagement, uh, to reach new consumers, and to test new business models. And I'm very excited to be here with, with you all and, and with this uh, esteemed panel. Augustina. Awesome. I'm Augustina Sartori. I um, joined Alta Beauty in 2018. I started my career actually as a startup founder, so I did the journey from, from startup founder to big corporation. Um, the company I founded, that was in 2011 till 2018, it was in the augmented reality space. So all of you here can imagine 2011 building a <laughs> virtual try-on technology was very technically challenging. So it was a very fun, interesting, difficult journey. Um, and what we built was virtual try-on for uh, makeup. So we got to, at the time, license the technology to several global brands. Most of our clients were based in the US. Um, and in 2018, Ulta Beauty being one of our clients, we started to talk more strategically on how could we partner, which led to the acquisition of my company. Um, and all of my team joined Digital Innovation. So Digital Innovation is a team of 36 people. We are focused on developing technology, sometimes developing it ourselves. Um, our team is a um, high tech team from data science to computer vision to development. Um, and basically, sometimes we develop the technology, but sometimes we partner with startups. We understand that we cannot create all the innovation, and innovation comes from everywhere. So we love to partner with startups, and as part of that, last year we launched our Corporate Venture Capital Fund, which I'm leading, um, which for me is a nice um, place in my heart, because I get to interact with much more startups than before. <laughs> so it makes me really excited. And uh, we are investing in technology companies. We are investing in technology companies that are envisioning the future of retail, that are envisioning the future of beauty. So some of the areas of investment, we're going to get into it later, but are like AR, XR, metaverse. So I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Um, well, let's yeah jump into it. I think it's important to kind of lay up uh, as we get to um, talking about generative AI and XR and this upcoming, you know, Apple headset announcement and how that's going to impact the space. Um, why has gaming and gaming culture become so important for fashion and beauty brands? And this is, um, you know, for all of you and, and this new um, social network for Generation Alpha. Like, why is this uh, movement so important right now for brands? Yeah. Kathy, do you want to start? Yeah, I'll go, I'll, I'll go ahead and start. Um, so definitely, you know, it, it has become kind of their new social network, like you mentioned. That's kind of where they're socializing. Um, I see it firsthand with my kids. Uh, they're all, three of them are Gen Alpha, which is 12 years old and still being born. And kind of that's where they're, you know, if they're not doing sports in the physical world, they're spending time in virtual spaces. And it's become a place for them to engage with friends, um, but also a place for them to, you know, do, like, to, to express themselves. So self-expression, even empowerment, finding ways of, of in, in, engaging with gaming. And gaming, from the fashion perspective, gaming is culture, right? So just like streetwear at one time, you know, started to impact fashion, continues to do so. Gaming is starting to impact fashion as well. You're starting to see that already with Forever 21, doing a physical, you know, a virtual to physical line. And we're gonna see a lot more of that happen. Um, so yeah, it's, it, I think at the end of the day is because for these younger generations especially, what happens in the virtual space is very real. Right, so they, yeah, like I think that that's part of it, and um, and it's kind of engaging with younger generations, and you know, self, definitely self-expression, empowerment. Um, I'll give you an, an example just to kind of illustrate the power of the, these these technologies, is that yeah, we could focus on you know branded worlds and, and everything, but also how they allow especially younger generations to use technology to um, to manage their emotions, and this is a, a very interesting story. So. Last year, uh, Technoblade, who um, was a very famous Minecraft player, uh, passed away from cancer at the age of, I believe he was 26, very young. Uh, my son was a fan, and he came into my office and, uh, and said he was crying. He said, Mommy, I just saw this. You know, he asked lots of, que lots of questions. I helped him you know, with as much as I could process the information. Then he said, I have an idea. 
and he kind of ran off into his little desk and then came back. And when he came back, um, he said, I want to show you this. He built a memorial for Technoblade in Roblox. Wow. So he used technology for self-expression to manage emotions to build something. Right? So that's where the power is, I think. It's that building, that co-creation opportunity between brands and these younger generations. That's yeah. incredible, and it's so true. And Maya Nix Cosmetics yeah. has been building in Roblox, in the sandbox. Um, you did Metaverse Pride last year. You, you know, launched the first ever Beauty DAO. Um, there's a virtual ambassador and being as well. So where is Nix Cosmetics going next with this? And, uh, and tell us about you know, your uh, take on Gen A in, in the Metaverse and gaming. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, first, I don't think I couldn't agree more with what Kathy said in terms of gaming really being um, a place for self-expression. Um, and, and I think that during uh, the Snap AR panel earlier, they or talk, they mentioned that you know, great technology alone is not enough. So, it needs to solve um, a pain point. Uh, and more than anything, it really needs to tap into what makes us innately human. And so, what makes us innately human is the desire to connect, uh, to be part of community, to be part of a tribe, um, and and. Self-expression plays a big part in that, in self-identity and how we construct our public persona and how we um, show up in the world and, and, and build connections and build community. And so um, the fact that self-expression is really the core tenant, I think, of the future gaming platform experiences, which are no longer the singular, solitary, uh, sticky game loop, but very immersive, engaging, and social experiences where um, younger generations can engage with their in real life friends uh, in virtual spaces uh, and self express through, through skins uh, and digital goods um, is what makes it so interesting uh, for both beauty for both beauty and fashion um, and if we think about the younger generation so gen Z. Uh, is a Nick's professional makeup core demographic. They over index in gaming uh, by a very large percentage, and Gen Alpha even more so. They've grown up as metaverse natives, not digital natives. And part of the reason for that is that, you know, unlike when we were growing up as kids, we had access to essentially freedom of play without parental supervision on the street from sunup to sundown, you know, just come home for dinner. Today, uh, kids are not growing up with that freedom because of concerns around safety uh, and et cetera. But where they do have freedom of play is in virtual spaces, in gaming. And so if they're growing up with this um, and engaging with their friends, then that is also impacting human behavior is consumer behavior. So it's impacting how they are as consumers and how they want to engage with brands. Uh, and at Nick's Professional Makeup, our mission is really to provide our creator community with, with tools, accessible tools, for unstoppable self-expression. Um, and wherever they might want to self-express, whether that's in, in real life or, or in virtual life. So by being entering into gaming and being gaming adjacent, and we have been for many, many years now, uh, it's really um, our way of continuing to uphold our promise to our community uh, of providing tools for unstoppable self-expression uh, wherever they might want uh, to self-express. And so, for example, last year, you know, we partnered um, with people of Crypto Lab, which Akbar, you are a co-founder of, yes. <laughs> um, and, and the Sandbox uh, to support uh, one of our core communities, which is the LGBTQI plus community, uh, during a time when the community was undergoing a lot of um, was at the center of a lot of cultural tensions in our country. And at the same time, last year was the first year where Pride could be celebrated in person after many years of lockdown. So it was a salubrious moment, but it didn't necessarily feel so salubrious, uh, and it didn't feel like it was perhaps safe or accessible for all to celebrate Pride at full volume. And so we felt it important to create a virtual space where um, everyone could celebrate Pride safely, no matter where they lived. And so we, uh, with people of Crypto Lab, part, uh, created the Valley of Belonging um, with the most diverse collection of avatars really driving inclusivity and representation in gaming spaces um, with makeup looks inspired by the Nick's professional makeup uh, pride collection. And, um, you know, the, the project was very well received by the community. Uh, it resonated because it had sold out during what's now dubbed the, the crypto winter. And, and this support of our community has continued into 2023, where we are now uh, with our pride collection um, uh, and, 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 and campaign that dropped on the 15th of May, uh, making a stand against, against cyberbullying within gaming. 
because 90% of LGBTQIA plus youth have experienced cyberbullying within gaming. Um, and so we've brought, um, in partnership with the LA LGBT Center, uh, the opportunity for people to get certified as allies uh, for, for this community uh, in, through digital platforms. So today on nixcosmetics.com, you can go through the allyship training and quiz to, to be certified, as well as within our experience um, in Roblox inside iHeartland. And so it's, it's really um, taking, the, taking the intersect of beauty, which is about self-expression, and gaming, which uh, has become around community and self-expression, and finding the points of intersect, following our community, listening to them, and, and supporting them um, so that they can safely mm -hmm. express at full volume wherever they might be. Uh, so this is a really great example of what we were alluding to earlier, purpose-driven campaigns utilizing gaming and emerging technologies. And we even heard this morning in the opening um, conversation with Neil Stevenson talking about creating experiences that are actually going to bring people into virtual worlds. And this is an example of that. So these are the kinds of experiences that are going to drive adoption, are going to drive more evolution of these emerging technologies. Um, so coming on to Augustina and um, Alta, how, you know, there's a lot of conversation about um, uh, the audience numbers in virtual worlds and which world, you know, uh, it, it works is high fidelity versus, you know, different environment that might be voxel, um, et cetera. So you all just launched the first makeup, um, the first makeup launch experience in the Ultraverse with Urban Decay. So tell us a little bit about that process and journey and how do you select which world um, to kind of work within? Yeah, so and it was a very exciting launch for us, the first one with a brand. And we actually launched the Roblox platform last year, um, around September last year. And initially, it was a very, you know, we wanted to experiment. We wanted to test and learn and understand how would a younger generation, um, a new sector for, to be honest, a consumer, that could be a consumer, would interact in these spaces what could we actually learn from them? So it was very exciting because we initially started partnering with a startup, but then our own team actually continued the development. So it was uh, developed and evolved by our team. And as we think about gaming, you know, our, our thinking around that is, well, if, if we care so much about how people look physically, how beauty is a way for self-expression, how beauty is a way to be yourself and be who you want to be, then why wouldn't we care about the same thing in the digital world? And the expression of that is the expression of who you are digitally. It is the digital representation of yourself. It is the avatar and what you choose to be. You know, when we go to, to our game, we see different type of avatars, and some of them look human, some of them don't. So people choose different ways to express themselves. So this is beauty. This is the definition of beauty in the digital world. So that makes us really excited, you know. Um, we have more than actually 5 million um, visitors to our game. Since the launch of Urban Decay, the last um, two weeks, we had half a million uh, visitors to all the Ultraverse just in two weeks. Um, yeah. So it was, it was very exciting for us. And people, you know, what we did was we did an initial launch where we did like a meet and greet with influencers, which was a whole learning by, by itself of like, why not bring in characters live that could interact with, you know, the, the different users. That was fun. Um, but now the, ga the game continues. And it's a specific activation that we did in a dome of our uh, Ultraverse where we branded everything for Urban Decay, where uh, actually the users can actually buy different makeup looks that were specifically built uh, by the brand. So it really allows a space to have fun. And beauty is fun, right? So it's, it's, it's kind of a really exciting moment to have the chance to experiment in these spaces. And to be honest, all of us craft what does beauty mean in the metaverse? Yeah, no, that's, that's incredible. And um, just to stick on that for a second, how is, and coming into AR, XR, how is that impacting beauty? Um, and this is for, for both of you, um, uh, Maya and Augustina. So with AR technology um, and also AI technology and virtual try-on, and how is that bringing us uh, you know, outside of the gaming experience and into perhaps retail environments? Um, and how is that technology that we're going to learn about for the next few days here going to impact the beauty experience? Yeah, so do you want to... Um, um, so I think, I mean, AR has been a part of the beauty experience for quite some time. And I mean, virtual try-on is definitely not um, 
new. Um, but it's, uh, I think when we, when we think about technology um, and use cases for technology, uh, including AR and AI, is really technology should deepen engagement, it should remove friction, um, and it should unleash the freedom of play, uh, as opposed to you know, remove or, or, or replace human creativity. And so when we think about virtual try-on, um, and we have a virtual try-on on NyxCosmetics.com, uh, this powered by Modiface, you can try on our entire portfolio of products um, uh, on our site, and number one, bar number one barrier to entry for cosmetics conversion online has always been the ability to try on the product. And it's not even just an online challenge. Even if you walk into a store, I mean, testers are not always readily available. Sometimes they're damaged. So try on is, is a number one barrier to entry or friction point when shopping for cosmetics. And, and virtual try on solves that really nicely and seamlessly. It also um, democratizes access to the creativity of our pro artists. Because in, inside the tool, you can not only try on each individual product, you can play with all the products to create your own different looks, and you can try on all the custom curated looks for our collections that our pro artists have created. So if you want to try on the latest Halloween collection, or the latest um, uh, spring spring drop, or even when we when we launched the Avatar collection um, at the time of the new movie release, you're able to try on those products uh, as they were envisioned by our pro artist team um, in the comfort of your own home or uh, from a device that's inside your pocket. So it's really making I think the access to beauty, uh, experimentation with beauty, um, and uh, access to pro artist tools more accessible um, and uh, at scale. You know, for us, the virtual try-on technology really brings to life like the, the feel and the touch of beauty digitally. If we think about Ulta Beauty, when Ulta Beauty was actually founded, they disrupted the beauty industry because they brought testers into the stores, which allowed people to try on makeup, which before it was not a possibility. And now, you know, fast forward, if you think about e-commerce and our digital channels, well, there was no way of trying things on. So we see try on, and that's why augmented reality is important for us as a way to actually experience this in a digital way, which was one of the key reasons of why the acquisition of Glam Street was strategic as well. Because if we believe in this, then digitally, this is the translation of that. So as we think about a virtual try on um, over the years, we've been evolving the technology we actually have most of our assortment calibrated, which was a, a big effort, and it is a big effort for our team to keep that assortment on. Um, and today, we have more than a year, we have around 11 million visits or try on, wow. more than 85 million shades tried on. So this is a That's real tool okay. that our guests really appreciate and use, and our guests actually convert more when they are using virtual try-on. So this is not only virtual try-on, we also have like skin analysis-based technologies, which also is about you know, analyzing your face and giving recommendations. So all of these tools are very important for our guests, um, are very important to guide that discovery, and are very important, again, to bring, bring fun, right? Because beauty is fun. So it's, it's kind of aligned also, also to that. And we continue to experiment with more, more technologies in store and online, both, uh, which have to do with, with bringing that, that feel and touch of beauty in a digital way. Yeah, absolutely. Did you want to ask? Yeah, and to that point, I think it's important to mention when we talk about AR, VR, and XR, right? There's been a lot of focus on the enterprise here, and yeah. I think that's great. But virtual fashion, for example, virtual yes. fashion to me is one of those case studies. It is one of those one of the industries that has been leading in some ways through virtual try-on and many different things, and it is going to be one of those use cases. Um, if you listen, for example, to a lot of the things that Tim Cook has said throughout the years, he's talked a lot about fashion, right? His latest interview was, was with GQ magazine, like. There's a lot there when it comes to the future of fashion. Um, and I've said, you know, I've said this many times, I said the world's next Coco Chanel uh, is probably a 10-year-old girl designing skins in Roblox. It's and true. I do believe that future, you know, the future of fashion is partly virtual, right? And that has to do with potentially the hardware that could come to us and everything. Uh, there's kind of a moment happening where actually with resurgence of like augmented reality mirrors. I was yeah. Just, uh, yeah, I was yeah, just interviewed them, with yeah. Vogue Biz, uh, by Vogue Business about it. And, and I said, you know, I, I don't think it's like a renaissance when it comes to augmented reality mirrors. I think it's more kind of a stepping stone towards that future where you have a wearable and you're going to be able to see fashion come to life 
in a totally different way, right? I'm enjoying, like, I'm really enjoying my dress, but if it could do a lot more things through the wearable, that's more exciting. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think so we've been yeah. playing with um, uh, AR for a while, as you mm -hmm. said. You've had virtual, you know, try-ons. It's been evolving. Um, we have been now experimenting in metaverse worlds, gaming worlds, um, using uh, blockchain technology and, and different um, uh, tools. So now with AI and generative AI becoming sort of the buzzword, how, um, and, and maybe Kathy, um, you know, you can start on that. Talk to us about sort of the hype cycle of, of last year and then now the shift to generative AI being the buzzword and how that's yeah. going to actually um, augment experiences in virtual worlds and for virtual try-ons and all of that. Yeah, so when anyone comes to me and says, the metaverse is dead, I say, no, the metaverse hype is dead. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's dead. <laughs> and the people that are still building are in the trenches. We like, you know, we're still in there, we're still building, still doing all these sorts of things, like a lot of us here. Um, so, you know, and, and it's interesting because it's, yeah, like the spotlight is on generative AI right now. But to me, they're all converging, they're, they're all converging technologies. They're all enabling technologies of the future state of the metaverse. What I do see when it comes to fashion and, and AI is kind of how it's being used with virtual, you know, with virtual beings. Um, you know, these virtual ambassadors that are being used by a lot of the brands. I find those use cases very, very interesting. And then, yeah, th this is, I think, at the end of the day, and I think several people have talked about it here. It's like, if we do have some type of wearable, you're not going to be normally always typing into a virtual keyboard, right? If you're out and about, you're probably going to be speaking to your device in some ways. So you're going to say, hey, I want this, you know, uh, AI is going to be a big part of retail. It's going to be a big part of how, you know, how you shop, how you engage, how you communicate. So, and you yeah. can design through AI yeah. prompts. You design some pieces through prompting yeah. AI and yeah, created yeah. fashion garments. It, it's a great way to prototype. So I've been using Adobe Firefly, for example, for some of my initial designs. Um, yeah, and you're starting to see, like, the fashion industry really engaging with AI from that perspective. So... Augustine and Maya, did you have any thoughts on the AI um, fusion into this conversation? Um, I, well, actually, I want to comment on the metaverse is dead, not dead thing, which yeah. is, <laughs> I mean, fundamentally, I mean, to me, it all comes back to, um, to, to human behavior, which translates to consumer behavior. And if, the, if Gen Alpha and Gen Z are growing up and have grown up uh, engaging and spending their free time in virtual spaces, engaging with their friends in real time in virtual spaces, this will no doubt shape the kind of consumers they, they become. Um, and, and back before e-commerce and omni-commerce and you know, O plus O plus O was a thing. We used to talk about uh, online and offline experiences. And at some point, the aha moment was like, oh, there is no line. Consumers just want to go shopping. However, you know, wherever they are, whatever the most convenient way is, so everything needs to be omni. Um, so I think it's the same thing with identity. Now we're talking about digital identity, physical identity, but for the younger generation, it'll just be identity. And therefore, um, yeah. digital wearables, fashion, beauty, et cetera, will play a role in that because it'll be part of, of building your, your identity in whatever space that, that you're in. So that was what I wanted to say. No, absolutely. <laughs> That's a great point. Yeah, and I think for us, it's, it's, again, it's connected, right? As we think, uh, you know, our, our technology team, our innovation team is looking and exploring these technologies. For instance, as we think about our hairstyle try-on, we are evolving it. We are using now generative AI in a way that it's not only about the color, traditional color try on with AR, it's also about hairstyles that can be rendered in a realistic way. Can I increase the volume of your hair? Can I reduce the volume of your hair? Can you put a new hairstyle? Like all of these are things that are much easier, much faster being able to develop now with these technologies that appeared that really makes it more accessible to everyone. So I think that's very exciting. If, if today you're a developer creating technology, it's a very exciting time, because what you can develop actually became, I mean, the times are much shorter. Yeah, that's right? a big so, and yeah. cost as well, right? It's yes, going to help exactly. cost for development for brands. That's key, so we can create more authentic experiences yeah. um, to connect with our consumers. So, and Kathy, I wanted to touch um, on what you're doing at Journey and how you're working to build sustainable commerce models for brands uh, in the metaverse and this post-smartphone uh, future. I would love to hear a bit more about that. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, in a lot of the work I'm doing right now, I'm really focused on looking at that post-smartphone future. Like, what replaces the mobile phone and how do companies and brands start to, and even cities, to be honest, start to think about uh, that, about that future. Um, so at Journey, I, I run the virtual studio, right? But we actually have a physical side of the house, an architecture and design firm, lighting and design. We do a lot of experiential. And one of the big tasks is uh, truly, truly merging 
the physical touch points with the virtual touch points, so it's seamless. Right, so we go in between both worlds. Uh, so we're looking at that. We're also helping a lot of companies look at uh, commerce models, new commerce models that are evolving. And yeah, I mean, uh, for all the talk about making money, well, I think you know it's interesting to look at commerce models and how people are are you know are engaging uh, you know and spending money in these places. Uh, if you look at, for example, Amazon, Amazon launched Amazon Anywhere. Uh, where you actually can be in game and you know you can purchase an item that you might want, whether it's a T-shirt or something for your. I think it's Perido, the name of the game. Um, Niantic. It's a Niantic game that's here. Um, but yeah, I think that's an evolution. Um, I see it with my kids and their preference for how they want to shop, um, and it's not something I force them to do. It's something that they enjoy doing. So, for example, if I say, "Hey guys, let's go clothes shopping," they will literally roll their eyes. They will literally be like, "Oh, mom, not that again." And they'll be like, choose a few things, and they'll want to go, right? But if I say, hey, guys, here's $20 so you can dress up, dress your avatars and your you know, house and adopt me, they are like super happy. So like where they're spending, where they're finding joy in self-expression and, and even in shopping, yeah. right? Because I mean, I enjoy it. I don't know. A lot of people do. Um, so, so yeah, they're finding, they're finding those moments there as well. Um, a really interesting thing, and I've shared this before that happened this Christmas, was my son came up to me and said, hey, mom, what did Auntie so-and-so get me for Christmas? And I said, Auntie so-and-so actually sent you $40 so I can go buy you a <laughs> gift card for Roblox. And he immediately, this is the funny part, he immediately said, oh, that's, you know, I don't remember the conversion, but he immediately said, that's 800 Robux. So he immediately went into conversion to a virtual currency inside a virtual platform. That's how powerful that is. He can't do that with euros or sterling or whichever <laughs> other, right? But he knows exactly how much Robux that means for him. So, and that's it's yeah. such a good point. So <laughs> would love to hear, you know, how are brands, so we're using these worlds like, um, you know, we always we have some team members who have who have kids who basically live in Roblox. We have moms that work at the agency who meet their kids after school in Roblox to check on them. You know, it's really fascinating. But they're also discovering these brands in there. There now have affinity for brands like Gucci or Allo Yoga or um, you know, obviously they're seeing Nix and Alta and iHeart and all these brands. So. Why is that so important? Why are brands, um, you know, from the brands sitting here on the stage to other brands, Gucci, LVMH, different, you know, Nelly from LVMH spoke earlier as well. Why are they focusing so much on Gen A, on, on those worlds, and, and how is it allowing discoverability, you know, even when maybe those um, audiences can't necessarily afford their products yet? And, and how are they building these digital economies? So um, I can I can go. I mean, so for, in terms of the like the reach, it's it skews definitely toward as far as Roblox is concerned, it skews definitely more towards Gen Alpha. But there is also Gen Z, and Gen Z is very much the core consumer uh, of mixed professional makeup, and Gen Alpha is very much the influencer of what their parents buy. Um, so there is this element of who the consumer is, also who is influencing the purchase, um, and then there's element of test and learn, which I think we all believe that the future of social media is changing, and gaming is going to play a big role in that um, and and gaming has a big role to play in self-expression so so part of it is reaching the core consumer that can purchase your product tomorrow or today and then the other part of it is figuring out new and different ways to deepen brand engagement to increase top-of-mind brand awareness so that you are the brand of choice and for example in our experience um, at, at, the Knicks, at the House of Knicks Professional Makeup in iHeartland, uh, there's an obstacle course. It takes between three to seven minutes to complete once you know how to complete it. And the entire obstacle course is built out of, of essentially Knicks spring launch products, which is super like, nicely integrated into the obstacle course, um, so it doesn't look uh, excessively like brand in your face. Uh, it's just a fun, sort of immersive way for you to uh, to engage with the brand. Um, and it, it'll take you many, many, many times to perfect completing the course. And then if you beat the leaderboard, you win a NYX Professional Makeup hoverboard for all of your iHeartland travel. So to get that level of engagement from traditional advertising or, or digital advertising where, where someone's spending um, hours with your brand trying to complete an obstacle course. I mean, there's nowhere else you can do that other than in gaming. Um, and I think it's a, it's a really, it's a beautiful way to figure out um, how to deepen uh, engagement with, with your consumer um, through a value exchange that's fair because they're having fun um, and you're facilitating that, that playful experience, which ultimately, as Augustina mentioned, beauty is about fun. Um, it's about the freedom of play and, and that's what we're encouraging with this experience. And what about um, 
kind of reward um, model. So I know a lot of brands are reimagining loyalty rewards. Obviously, everybody's heard about Starbucks, Odyssey, Nike, Swoosh, but also rewarding players for the time spent in games. You know, could we see a future where that is unlocking experiences in Ulta, for example, right? Like uh, the amount of time you're spending within certain worlds. I mean, is that things brands are exploring? Is that a possibility in our future? Yeah, look, for, for us, the, what we are experimenting right now is very much test and learn mode, right? And it's very much about engagement and um, understanding really this, this new generation, right? For our surprise, in, in the Ultiverse, actually more, close to 50% of the people that experience the Ultiverse and Urban Decay um, are over 18. And we were like, wow, okay, maybe it seems like we're attracting an older generation here to interact. So it's, you know, it's not only the, yo the younger generations that are there, it's, it's changing and it's fluid, right? So that's something interesting. As we think about rewards, you know, it's something that we are actively working on, on how can we, you know, m switch from a more, I would say, transactional program to something more experiential for our guests. Um, we have our loyalty and rewards program we have more than 40 million, actually, loyalty and reward members, um, and wow. more than 95% of our sales actually come from those 40, 40 million members. So we know a lot about our guests, right? So as we think about the evolution of loyalty and what it yeah. could be, we are looking to experiment on that space, moving it from more of an experiential, you know, to an experiential experience, less of a, a transactional. So our innovation team is actually actively working on that. So we'll, we'll, be, we'll have more learnings to come. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to yeah, hear about that because that's an insanely engaged number of people. Mm -hmm. uh, that's so great numbers. Um, it was interesting. I just recently watched Air, uh, the movie. About, yes. Yeah. Um, and, and I was thinking a lot about Nike's uh, Web3 loyalty program, Swoosh. I'm not sure if any of you guys are members here of that. But um, there's, an, yeah, there's an element of co-creation, right? Um, with, with Swoosh eventually work, people are going to be able to say, I want to design this way, I want to co-create with Nike, right? So I think that that's kind of where we're heading with a lot of these like newer Web3 loyalty programs. It is co-creation. It's also, you know, being benefited as, as, you know, as part of that community with, you know, whatever it is, with the, whether it's tokens or, you know, with Starbucks, for example, you do certain quests, that's the Odyssey. Web3 loyalty program, they don't, they don't use the word NFT or anything, but uh, with Starbucks Odyssey, if you do these quests, uh, you get these points and then you can, re you can get these stamps and these stamps actually trade for a couple thousand dollars. So it's really interesting to see how all these things are starting to kind of, kind of get organized. I, um, I actually, I don't know if you saw my post, but I, I ordered pancakes for a sleepover that my kids had and I ordered from IHOP and with the bag came a flyer, a printed flyer, old school media, talking about their Web3 loyalty program. I had no idea that I wow. had a Web3 loyalty either. program <laughs> called International Bank of Pancakes. So depending on how many pancakes you, you buy, you get pan coins. They actually use the word crypto in the flyer, which I was wow. very surprised yeah. by. Um, but yeah, the, you're starting to see brands kind of go into these new Web3 loyalty programs. So, the, it's yeah. it's fast. I had no idea. I'm gonna check yeah. that out. <laughs> I don't eat that but, many pancakes, you know. But yeah. <laughs> but um, and I know we have a few minutes left. But before we get into the Apple headset convo, the the co-creating yeah. thing is is really fascinating. Where brands we're seeing brands like Hennessy, Gucci, etc. You can now co-create with your favorite brands from people all over the world. Um, I know uh, you know Nyx has a DAO that involves uh, beauty creators that are actually going to be empowered to put forward ideas and co-create which is really incredible if you think about it for such an, a, a massive, you know, Fortune 100 um, company. So I just, I don't know if you had any thoughts on, on, on that as well, Maya. Yeah, well, I mean, so Nick's Professional Makeup, like from its inception, has always uh, worked very closely with the creator community. Um, it worked closely with makeup artists, makeup artist schools, and self self-proclaimed and self-created makeup um, experts to, to deliver pro-level quality products or so pro-level pigments at an accessible price point. So now as we're thinking about the evolution of the beauty space and uh, the role that self, the, the, the evolution of self-expression going from only in um, IRL to IRL and IVL, then the future creators that will help define the future of beauty in the metaverse and the role of cosmetics and digital identity are going to be 3D creators. 
So just like we were close with and are still close with influence and makeup artists uh, in the IRL world, um, the Gorgeous, the, uh, the beauty DAO by NYX Professional Makeup, was created to build a 3D creator community that together with NYX Professional Makeup will co-define the what beauty um, can look like in, in the virtual space where we are not ruled by the limitations of um, of, 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 of physics, <laughs> so um, so it's it's really about building community. I mean, th that's a through line, and I think everything that we do um, is our communities are driving force, and and we try and support them wherever they are, and can continue to uphold our promise, and uh, and creating a platform for these future creators uh, to be able to get funding for their projects before they start working on it, which I think is also a very unique element of the of the gorgeous um, beauty DAO. Yeah, it's, it sounds like there's a lot of, I know, um, Augustina, um, Prism Venture, Prism Adventure, sorry, um, is doing a lot of investment in the generative AI space. So there's a lot of support here for creators, emerging startups, tech. Um, so do you want to chat through a little bit of the, the work um, at Prism Ventures and the recent investments that you've made? Yeah, yeah, sure. So at Prism, Prism Ventures, the idea of the investments, it's really to invest in startups that are creating the future of retail and the future of beauty. So as part of that, we have different investment verticals, and one of it is AR, VR, and metaverse. Another one is AI and personalization, where the generative AI space fits as well. So as we think about the generative AI space in particular, there's three areas that we're looking at. We're looking at text generation, image generation, and also code generation. So for the three of them, actually, we are, we are in some of them investing, some of them already invested uh, and experimenting for code generation. We have an investment in a company called Iterate AI, which actually generates uh, code. So we've been using that tool for our, our own experiments as well. So that's been interesting. For, for the image generation, we just invested in a company called Iliad out, out of Y Combinator. Um, it's, they're building a tool to really disrupt uh, the creation of content. And this means creating 3D assets in a more scalable way, or creating 2D assets, uh, and uh, potentially even disrupting the virtual try-on technology that we have today. Wow. Um, so that, that's very, very exciting. And our team is going to dive into the tool and you know, create together and try to understand how can we use these uh, new technologies that are out there. And on the text side, you know, we've been using AI for our chatbot for a while. But now, of course, with the appearance of GPT, this is something that we are diving into, right? Like we can, ex to your point, you said previously, we can build these technologies in a much faster way, in a cheaper way, right, with less people, and in a more engaging way. Like these experiences are more engaging. They are more conversational. So we're also looking uh, on that space, not only to the investments, but also ourselves from the innovation perspective to experiment uh, with GPT, large language models. and. Yeah. That's amazing. I'm excited to follow along and see mm -hmm. what comes of that. It, I do want to mention around that investment, yeah. right? Investing in creators, investing in, in builders and in, in everything. And obviously, you know, I'm not, <laughs> I'm neither of your companies. I'm just me. But for example, I, 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 I mentioned this to you. I recently made the announcement that I launched an endowed scholarship with Florida International University. It's called the Kathy Hackle Scholarship for Virtual Fashion. Wow. And it is to promote, like, I really believe in promoting the next generation of fashion designers and the people that are going to come through. So, you know, while I can fund, you know, big investments in some of these companies, I can help fund uh, students that really want to become those creators of the future. So that's incredible. It's, it's things, so. super, yeah, inspirational to see all the opportunity that's possible. And before um, we have just a few minutes for closing remarks, but I wanted to kick it off with you, Kathy, this Apple headsets that everybody <laughs> is talking about, right? We're going to see what happens soon. Um, it's, it's not really inclusive with the price tag, but people are saying it's really going to reignite the conversation, um, you know, around metaverse and virtual worlds and the way we're going to engage and the apps that are going to be possible on there. So, so what are your thoughts as kind of closing remarks? Like, will it, won't it, um, you know, is oh. this a positive, um, what, what do you think? Is I gonna hope come out so, because I think either Apple's teasing us or trolling us here. Uh, right? It's either <laughs> one of those. Um, I think for the XR industry, because I've been a part of it for, long, for so long, I think we've been waiting for a watershed moment. There's been many, right? And, and this is one of those, so I, I do hope it happens. From the fashion perspective, I think fashion is going to be one of those use cases. It just seems so. I would even dare to say that probably some Maisons are already uh, working with, yeah. with Apple to create some content, who knows? 
Um, so I'm really excited to see how the fashion and you is are writing about that too at Vogue Singapore now. Yeah, yeah, yes. I'm, uh, Vogue You're Singapore the just invited editor. me to be a, a metaverse editor, so I'll be writing a lot about how you know fashion and, and beauty can prepare for that post smartphone future. Well, excited to yeah. read what you write after the reveal yeah. of the headsets. <laughs> Any closing remarks, Maya and Augustina? Yeah, I mean, on that, I, I am very excited about the launch. I feel like every time Apple launched a new product, they disrupted the way they were thinking about it, right? Like, so I think. Who knows what they will launch, but I'm, I'm excited to see if it gets to that level of disruption where we all of us are sitting and thinking like, wow, I hadn't even imagined that this could be a reality. And to be honest, the last launches of their products also drove mass adoption. Like a lot of people here are creating amazing innovations with all these glasses, but like, are they really adopted massively? No. So then maybe this helps all of us to really bring this to life in a way that today there's still, you know, it's, it's, there's still a lot of education to be done. Yeah. Maya? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very excited. I think, um, I think Scott Galloway probably said many times that uh, as far as VR is concerned, no one's going to put anything on their face. It does not make them look sexier. Yeah. And so <laughs> I'm really excited that Apple decided to enter this category because, um, you know, all of their products have this sex appeal and... According to Scott, that's what's going to drive mass adoption. So <laughs> finger, here's fingers crossed that you know this product is definitely going to deliver um, and make us all look sexier when we wear it. <laughs> well, looking forward to this conversation again next year. Um, and thank you all for all your thoughts. And thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.